All right, well, we are making the rounds. We are now in historic downtown Mount Dora, and this place behind us has been an antique mall for many years, but I haven't been back here in many years. Everyone else comes here during the extravaganza and shops, but that was a couple of weeks ago, so I'm hoping that now that we'll have refilled with wonderful new things. Maybe that they bought from me at the show, who knows? And past these two wing griffins, that's the front door, and away we go. There's a very big, pretty piece of Bristol glass in there. And look at the price, $79. I still can't believe how inexpensive Bristol is with the birds painted, and that's probably 15 or 17 inches tall. If that was any other piece of art glass, it'd be twice the price. The Fenton piece, done in 1984 in a similar style, is priced at $89 by comparison. Blanco didn't do a lot of ruffled wear, but they are correct that this is a Blanco vase. Notice the ruffles and crimps are not even in uniform in the way that Fenton pieces are. This came out of the, I believe in the 50s and was done into the 1960s. You have been finding some enamel wear today. And this is something that you've been uh, collecting more. I think these are really great. I love the color and two pieces together for one price is a nice deal, only $28. Is there a maker name on it anywhere? They don't always have. There were a lot of small studios that did them too. I don't think it necessarily matters. They're just a great design. That Fenton Lime Custard is great. My little black light is so puny it won't really show, but that glows really well under a black light. This is a fun kit purse with the teak sides. Not an Enid Collins, but definitely a great shape, and they want 35 for that. Sometimes you can find jewelry repairers who have these flat back stones that go with this. This will glow under a black light. It's a depression glass ice bucket with the metal bale there, $49. I like these little early 20th century Majolica figures because they always have crazy faces and sometimes they're doing fun stuff. Right around 1900 when you see this style of numbering. And this one has a presentation date to Flora, Christmas of 1903. Oh, I actually did it? Yay! Yay! Priced at $120. I sold Jocelyn at Crazy Lamp Lady a very similar paperweight. This one is an Eicholt. She definitely has gotten a lot of us excited about Eicholt designs, and he's been retired for over 20 years, so his stuff is not in production anymore. This one's priced at $79. That's a nice piece, the dark iridescent carnival. I believe that's Lotes or Paul McKoenig from Bohemia. I like the metal work with the flowers, very Art Nouveau, that holder. They are asking $1,250, and they say that it is Kralik. Oh, okay, very good, Kralik Bacillus. Kralik is another good company from that part of the world in that era. So they've done a little research on it for us. This Blanco piece, they came in various colors. You see them in clear a lot, and sometimes the clear ones would have a bowl put on top, and they would call it a fish tank, priced at $149 in this case. This crazy fish is a Danish designer named Michael Anderson, who we don't see too often. That's spelled S-E-N. I like the modernist design on it. You can see the little fin in the back there. That's priced at $179. A lot of collectors for these in Florida, a lot of them were made here. This one that has the shape of the state with the abalone chips is in Happy Orange, made for tourists to buy by Sunburst Plastics of Orlando. A lot of plastics in Orlando at one time. Tupperware started there, after all. A bunch of little Wedgwood trays here. The neoclassic ones in the Jasper where we see a lot, but this one is the emblem for Rolls-Royce. And this one sells for a bit of a premium, but they have not priced it at a premium. And so I think I'll take that one. They also have one for Australia, and we have a lot of viewers in Australia. I'm always tempted to buy things for our Australian and New Zealand viewers, but the shipping is pretty prohibitive a lot of the time. We show a lot of Rosebill because they made a lot of Rosebill, but this Ixia arranger with the center bowl and the candle holders, or you could use them, I suppose, for buds, is an unusual form that was only made in this particular line. It's priced at $149. You really almost never see that piece. Whereas the Cosmos face, you see a little more often. This is one of the first of their lines in the flowers. The bookends here are beautiful. They're armored bronze. They did a lot of paint on brass work. Collecting brass is nothing new. There's a new interest in it. These are actually a metal coating over a base. And they're really handsome. They're priced at $125. 
plastic can be fantastic. This is an Alfio de Bella Lucite Ice Bucket from Italy. It's priced at $125. It's got the original tongs and no scratches. That's really important with these plastic pieces that they not have any scratches or places where people butted out a cigarette or something foolish. Waterford lamps and some of these other large home items are definitely collectible as well. And this particular pair, they are asking $300 each. And a lot of the Waterford lamps do sell in that price range. Table full of blue bright blue capri blue right out of the 60s the ellie smith i always like this because it's the candle holder this looks like it is an empoli piece actually they have blanco question mark but it's definitely not blanco didn't do any of these type of stoppers with a plastic liner that's definitely italian one piece that unfortunately is missing its dauber is this cute little piece here i believe that was cambridge glass that's a 1930s piece in a great color. Camper, yes. I always like the blue and green together. I remember my first business partner telling me that blue and green did not complement each other and should not be used together. And I said, I love all of that blue and green 70s stuff. And now he has an antique store and he begrudgingly has to accept that a lot of us like blue and green. <laughs> Some Florence ceramic pieces made in Pasadena, California in the 40s are just simple figures and some of them are more complex when they're sitting on sofas and things they tend to be more expensive this one's priced at 155 they almost always had a name this one's elizabeth there's the florence ceramics mark florence ceramics ended up being a triumph for someone who went through a whole lot of pain in her life her husband and son were both killed in the second world war and she took to making ceramics of happy people to try to make herself feel better and then people said this stuff's really good and she started selling it and made a giant success out of it. If the Viking Bowl wasn't schmaltzy enough, you could add a Hollywood Regency base to it. I don't think this is a factory thing. Somebody drilled it and put this together in the aftermarket. It's priced at $35, but it definitely was done back in the day. Who would have guessed that paint by numbers would become high art, but they are. This one's $40, and for the horse, that's about the right price now. I remember when people laughed at these, but now they are very collectible. So Mr. Ed had the last laugh. Humpty Dumpty. This is advertising on the back. We're going to see an ad for Philco, I believe. It's hard to read, but there it is. And this one is priced at $40. That's about the right price for that particular bank. Oh, Zeno would go crazy for those shades. And the lamps are pretty spectacular. I'm not sure they look great together, but... I would find another pair of lamps to put the shades on and get bigger shades for those, but those are pretty amazing. I'm pretty sure that's a, an Italian design and, oh yes, that's right, yeah, Carlo Nelson. I had forgotten who did these. They're asking 4800 the pair, but they really are spectacular and they really are designer. But those shades. A nice little Florida set here. We have the swordfish or sailfish, $42 for the pair is a pretty good price. These sets can sell for up to $65. And then a nice Koo Rock bowl behind. This one has a little bit of wear. We're finding a few pieces today, but Koo Rock did wear, so you have to really check it over for condition. This one's only $12, though. That's a pretty good deal. Let's look at it under a strong light. You'll see it has a few scratches and a little bit of dullness to the finish and a little bit of disturbance to the design. So for those reasons, I will leave it, but I like it. Well, this piece has wandered away from home. This has a Cusack label. Cusack is a decorating outfit in Seattle that imports pieces from various other places and does embellishment or other things and then puts their label on it and sells it. I'm surprised to see a Cusack piece all the way here in Florida. They've been in business for decades, so there are old pieces that say Cusack as well. I like the Payton City party line. These multi glasses, this mint color actually does have a teeny bit of uranium salt, so this one will glow. Not all of these mint colors do, but I just like the shape of those. It looks like there's a big set for $120. Golden Era and Silver Era comics. Silver Era really is when you start getting up past 12 cents. And the older ones were even less expensive, but a lot of these early superheroes are very collectible now. These are in really good condition. Condition makes a big difference in value on these. 
huge difference. In fact, that's where you're seeing a lot of $25 to $50 prices on these because they are not torn. They're not missing a bunch of pages. They don't have big folds in them or someone's name written on them. This is a really fun 50s Let lamp that is sold. Glass. Wasn't that it? Let it stain glass. This one has a great shade, $95. That's a great price. And then this one is $8.95. But look at that amazing split shade, all original in perfect condition. This piece is also sold, and I'll bet to the same person. Um, that with the original dragonfly shade. Whoever made it, that's what brings up the price. Well, they're they're doing it in Tiffany style, but also this Quasal lamp company in the 90s who was doing these did a lot of metal work and a lot of tiling as well. And so that is the reason for the higher price. I gotta ask this man a question because he knows. This is probably 1905, 1910 to tell you the truth. That's gorgeous. It really is pretty with the slag glass and then the base with the mermaid is really unusual. It's so gorgeous. After Metlocks quit producing in California in the 80s, we see a lot of Portuguese wear that takes on these leaf patterns that are similar to what Metlocks was making. They filled the void in the marketplace. They're a little lighter weight. They're pretty, they're about 30 years old now. They have the entire set for $139. It's the other thing that looks like Reuben glass, but isn't, these were actually made in Israel about the same time. So there is actually an Israeli line that looks similar to those. I like showing things I've never shown before. And this piece has a label that I had not seen. So let's look at it so we know if it doesn't have a label, what we're looking at, the glaze stops and then goes to white on the inside. This is very much Art Deco, and it's Marvan Art Pottery out of Chicago. White clay, not glazed underneath either. So the glazing isn't particularly heavy, but it's a nice shape. And if you see other pieces, well, you might end up finding a bargain. The Star Steed, that's a little different too, being footed like that. And that's his uh, second factory because it's got the rooster in the logo. So that means it's sometime between 1953 and 63. And I just uh, always like the jeweling around you know, it's everything he did was very fanciful. He was pretty out there and so were his designs. I just sold my bird box. I have to admit I didn't get as much as that. When they didn't use a lot of Windex or scrub it hard, you still get the paint on them. The old quilt was harder to do because there weren't that many places to paint flowers, but Charlton decorated every single one of those pieces. And the prices are pretty good. I, I'd be more interested if I hadn't just gotten a bunch. One of the more modernist lines of Royal Copenhagen was this, they called it the eyes. As you can see, because of the repeating pattern, little picture there is $45. The three or four of us here would all like you to join us every Monday and Wednesday for premieres at 8 p.m. Eastern. We also have the Antique Nomad live channel where we do live comments and sometimes live sales. So subscribe to that if you would too. Subscribing to all of the channels is free. It doesn't cost anything, and then you can click that bell to be notified of future videos. There's Scottish potteries that do the Loch Ness Monster, but this one is by Goebel, believe it or not. The German company, yes, they did the Loch Ness Monster with his Scottish tan. $25 on that guy. This cute little girl music stand is a Joseph Originals. The music stands are harder to find, and they still sell for pretty good prices. This one's priced at $45, and that's a pretty typical selling price for her. You have to look and make sure the candelabra wasn't broken off. This is neat Chadwick spool cotton. The Chadwick name has been used on a lot of products over the years. This would be one of the earlier ones. There was also a Japanese importing company called Chadwick in the 1950s, and you'll see all sorts of house goods made by them. I like the old pie safe here with the Pierce work. Makes a nice display. It's priced at $4.95. It looks like it is true antique. It's even got the original old turn latch couple of Lane of California Mallard TV lamps, the small and the large. They came in a few sizes. Oh, that's cute. I've always liked that line. Yeah, George Briard, he made a contract with a company called Columbia Enamelware, which was going to go out of business, and this saved them. This was in the 70s when Enamelware was starting to be that cheap stuff that you bought at Kmart and nobody wanted it anymore, and then he tarted it up, and all of a sudden it was popular again. $30 seems like a good price having the warming stand. I'm surprised that it's all there. Just as there were fireplace screens, there were also candle screens. And this is a lovely little French piece with the embroidery. This is going to date to the 1880s or 90s. You see the hand hammering on the metalwork. It's got a nice base on it. And it is priced at $250. 
and next to it is a really neat alabaster lamp with the bird's hand carved. This looks like something from the 1930s, and that's priced at $4.50. It even has a bird finial, so it's all original. Yeah, nice old Hudson Bay blanket. I wonder how many points that has. Four points, okay. The points are these lines, and they were so you could tell the size of the piece without having to pick it up. A three and a half, which this actually is, means that it's for a twin bed. This is what happens to instant collectibles when they are no longer instantly collectible. Beware, Funko Pop buyers. 1930s, I like the frame. It's interesting with the metal mesh in a brass tone. This is a neat old Lucky Strike display. From the grocery stores, you'd put your cartons here. And this one is priced at $2.25. It's Masonite from the 1950s. These are marked, sometimes they are not, but this is Gilner, another popular California company that made elves and pixies and sprites, similar to Treasure Craft and Pixie Potters. Uh, the Gilner pieces have this C for an ear. They don't have an impression inside like the Treasure Craft ones do. They were made about the same time. This one's got a 1950 copyright on it. And this little one on the leaf is unmarked, but clearly the same company. You can even tell in the uh, colors. And that one is priced at 15. The dealer, I think, doesn't realize they're by the same company. So this one's actually a pretty good deal. I've always liked the colored aluminum in these canisters or something you don't see as much as the drinkware. A little bit worn, this is Steel Masters. These were made in Italy a little bit after the American pieces that were made in Wisconsin. A few pieces of 1970s colors in Royal Hager pottery with the flowers. These bigger pieces of Hager are starting to really be sought after and the prices are still good, which is why a lot of people are realizing they get a big vintage look for a fairly low price still. We're looking at about $30 for the tall green ewer. Chromolithography was for a lot more than just advertising. A lot of prints and Pictures like this were made in the 1880s, 90s, and around 1900. You can tell by the ornateness of the frame with the gesso work that it is that era. And look how this just glows in the center. It's called the Old Church. This is priced at $125. This piece here is by Camark Pottery, but they would not do the gold decorating themselves. They would sell these to a company called Norso also in Camden, Arkansas, and they would use 22 karat gold back in the 50s when the weeping gold and everything was popular. So it is actual 22 karat gold in the paint, but it's such a very, very light coating of it, you could never get the gold out without burning it off, and that's why it priced at 32.50. Well, all right by there, side. side by side, exactly, yep. This is a much easier way to show it. So the Sequoia wear here, the drip glazes don't really all drip to the middle. They're kind of more blotchy. Notice the difference in the brown tone. This is very even, and this varies a little bit depending on where it's filling in the design. So that's your difference if you don't see labels on them. Well, here's Stengel's Antique Gold. They were inspired by a lot of the other gold stuff being done in the 60s, and now that gold is popular again, I think a lot of these pieces are starting to come back. The Granada Gold or the Antique Gold were two of their lines that were very popular, and the piece that is the hardest to find, of course, is the dealer plaque. Someone asked me recently how to spot fake McCoy marks, and what I'll do is show you this one because this is a real McCoy mark that a lot of people think is fake. They ended up being bought by Lancaster Colony, and there is the LC mark under there, under the written McCoy. So this actually is a valid McCoy label. This is late 70s, early 80s when the strawberries were popular and they want 75 for the set of four of these. The mark you have to be careful of is actually the old script McCoy. Those were the marks that were reproduced, particularly on things like cookie jars. Francoma was in Oklahoma, but they had a lot of visitors from surrounding states, and so they made Texas-shaped dishes. They were usually small for souvenir, but later on they made this big one as a relish with the blue bonnets. You'll see the pink clay. This is their last era of clay. It's where they took the red sepulpa clay and added a little something to it that made it lighter, but it's not the tan of the original Francoma back in the 30s and 40s. You'll also see things like Louisiana crawfish mugs and a little ashtray the shape of the state of Oklahoma that were sold as souvenirs at the factory. Nice farm table here with the enameling. I like the basket. That's a neat design. The chairs obviously were redone and they are selling them as a set. They're not originally a set, of course, but they're cute together, and they want $5.50 for the set, which is not really a cheap price. 
Here we go. We were talking about the other elves. This is Pixie Potters. These were the original ones in 1943 that were made in California during the war. They want $15 for that one. Then Treasure Craft in the early post-war era came out with the sprites with the impressed ear. See the impression in the ear different from the Gilner we saw earlier. This one they want $25.99 on. This is also a treasure craft piece. The S&P Company, this old tanker truck, $19.99. They liked themed sets rather than matched pairs. And this one is just the way it was presented. You've got the semi-cab and then this rides along the back. Or if you want to put a fine point on it, you could get the Camark S&P that says S&P. Pretty straightforward. I like the yellow. We see a lot of the red, but the yellow is this outfit out of Columbus with the canister set, and it's even got the salt and pepper shakers. They want 65. Unfortunately, the lettering often got worn through overzealous washing. We are not seeing a whole lot of Holt Howard out on the marketplace now. A lot of it has gone into collections, but here's some cute pieces here. We've got the jam and jelly, and you can see their lettering is different than the Devar that came later. Their pixies also are a little different shape. Price it. 149 for the mustard, 179 for jam and jelly. The Merry Mouse shakers are priced at 55. And then these are Miss Pris, which was a left in line. And since it's Florida, I always like to show whole ebb tide because it does well here. This is a very, very dark maroon example with the gold. They also came in happy turquoise and pink colors. Here is the Victor Gem. I like the overhead warming ovens here. That's a little more deluxe than the usual style that we see. And they smartly left it on the cart for easy rolling if someone buys it because these things are heavy. And you could have a smooth top long before we had ceramic top. I sold my Turner print last week. This one's got the original mirror frame with the storks. And it's interesting because these are in the outline, which is a little bit different for them. A little more suggestive than literal, like a lot of theirs are. This one is priced at 189. Turner was out of Chicago and they were a mirror and frame company and they came up with the bird prints because they thought it would sell more mirrors and frames and it really did and they're very collectible now. This is another pigeon forge piece but in the pink with the dogwood you don't see these as often. Nice family run pottery. This is $30. It's nice to see them getting their due after all this time. Prices on the jewelry seem pretty good. I like that duet pen. Dragon wrapped? Okay. Lagoon is a decent company. I like these Rivoli stones. The reason I wanted to see this is it's got a Stanhope in it because of that little... It's probably going to be the Lord's Prayer, but we will look. Well, Mount Dora was a rain out on Saturday and Sunday, although I did have business and it actually was a good show. I was pleasantly surprised and thanks to all the viewers who were intrepid enough to brave the weather. But we packed up early. It was the wettest pack out I've ever had. But we are going to have some fun anyway on the way home because we're going to stop and shop. Okay, I'm looking out in the soggy parking lot and I am seeing friends of mine getting out of their cars and running to the door. So I'm going to hold it open for them. The fringe is such a, a question to me on those. I yeah. feel like just cutting it off. But people don't care. Yeah, because it's beautiful. And that one is really nice. I like the pattern. I really love that one. I can't see the price on it though, but... That, no, I'm not sure what it is. I, I didn't look at it when I was here a couple weeks ago. All right, let's see what we'll right there. people found. Oh, what'd you find? A jar full of marbles? The glowy marbles, yeah. I'm picking Ooh. All the, all the cool. All right, I'll hold the flashlight and you pick the glowy ones, okay? Oh, let's see what's in there. There's a glowy one right there. Oh, there's a couple glowy ones. You pick them. Oh, you gotta unbury it. Sorry. This is a Viking lidded compote that we don't really see very often. They have $69 on it, and that's probably about full retail, but it is an unusual shape we don't usually see. Original boxes. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, yeah. I so, have not seen these large sizes before. That's really interesting. This one's limited to a thousand pieces. Cool. So, yeah, I spotted that. I was like, hey, come check this out. Oh, those are really great. I've never seen them this big. And no, I never have either, actually, and the prices are really good. Yeah, interesting. And they've got the double mark. And this is a, yeah, this is a newer mark. I I am not familiar with these in this size. Those are really, really cool. Oh, and look at the bottom of that one. Yeah. That's got the whole DeRosa and mark and all of the bird and everything. Yeah, very cool. Nice find. <laughs> 
they do have some really interesting Native American in this one. There is something you've really never seen. It's a skull cracker. It is for exactly the purpose that it sounds. Get down for you to look at because you could hit somebody from a little bit of a distance and then escape. And this is really interesting. Continue you stitching. It does look like it has some age. You can see some evidence of use. And here, this says it's eastern sewer plains. And I would say that's right because the beating is not as intense as some of the further west, like the crow. We tend to see more elaborate beating. That's priced at $249. They say circa 1880. I have to say that seems a little newer than that to me. The colors of the beads have a lot to do with it. And I am certainly no expert in that, but you can research it sometimes by the colors of the beads and what was prevalent at a certain time. Look at these cute little felt characters. You might not realize they're Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs, but yes, indeed they are. They were made for FAO Schwartz, and this is 60s era. You might find these individually in someone's Christmas pile, so now you know to look for them and see if you can match up a whole set. Snow White has pink hair. She was a little ahead of her time. This is Imperial Glasses Peach Glow from the 1960s. You notice the very strong color gradations between it's definitely not as integrated and flowing as the Mount Washington peach blow from a century before. A lot of people were really angry with Imperial Glass when they made this, but because it was not an exact reproduction, it actually is collectible in and of its own right. And it is definitely better quality than the 1980s reproductions by AA Imports, which tried to look more like the original, but will have no wear on the bottom at all. Well, here is a cute little vase. And it may not look like much, but there is our bottom. It has nice wear. It is from the 1950s, and it is most likely to be Blanco glass in that color, even though it's a more finished pontal than usual. For $12, that is all it needs to be. Oh, she's a beauty. You sure people work in this place? <laughs> Am for a while. She is quite pretty. Look at the face. Another unusual Blanco piece is this basket. This is Ruby. This is a foil label, and this is from the late 40s. This is one of the staff-made designs. Before they had designers, the staff in-house made the designs, and there are some really good ones that have stayed in the line forever, including the Twin Spout Pitcher. I just sold my Enterprise manufacturing press, and this one is priced at 145. It needs the spigot to be complete though, and mine had it, and that's why I got 195 for mine. This little, little tiny baby pitcher with the stars is Shawnee Pottery from right about the time they opened in 1938. It's hard to see the USA mark on there, but it actually is the correct Shawnee mark because the A tips a little bit, almost like an italic. And $8 is a pretty good price for these because you just don't really see them anymore, and people like little mini pitchers, so that might go up to the counter with me. Oh, it looks like they are having some fun in here. I think I see a swung base in someone's right hand. Ooh, I like the design on that. Dominion. Yeah, very nice. Okay, behind this very strange plastic merman is a cool ceramic frog. Climbing the wall. Let's see. I think this is Stanford, China, but it's got some glazed flaws, which is kind of typical of this era. $16 isn't bad, though. And mushrooms. Mushrooms and frogs. Oh, and oh, she's a mermaid. Oh, and yeah, mushrooms. Mushroom. Oh, yeah, that's everything. That's cool. She's old. Yeah, no, she's great. Ten cents originally. Yeah, you know that's got age. This is a company called Clay Art that was out of San Francisco in the 1980s, and most of their masks are women, and they're starting to be very popular. But this one is Merlin the Magnificent. And they generally had these ribbons. They're often marked this, and they were made in the U.S. originally. And the USA ones are the ones people are starting to collect. This one is priced at $35. This is the Iron Horse, and it's a cigar box purse. And the way it's signed puts me in mind of Enid Collins' purses, although this isn't exactly the kind of cigar box purses that Enid Collins made. I believe this one actually was a pattern that you could get, and you could make your own in the 1960s. And... Somebody did, and it's priced at $32, which is a pretty fair price for a cigar box person. This is something we've never shown before. This is Ernestine Salerno, and it's a set of four late 70s, early 80s styles. You can tell by the colors as well as the shapes. 
you see the number 871, but if you could read through this very thick, heavy glaze, you would see the Ernestine Salerno mark on them. I think the shapes are really interesting. And they are Italian made. And you will see the signature here on the side. This is Swack Designs. This is one of these funky, fun pottery companies that was a big deal around the year 2000. And they are spaghetti pools. Swack was out of Canada, 75 for the set. Now this is interesting because this is Fenton's orange tree in carnival glass. Now one of the reasons they call it carnival glass is they started giving this away when it went out of style or selling it cheaply as souvenirs. So this was sold to a place in Doctors Cove, Nova Scotia. And now I think that really makes it interesting because it's a little different than you would expect to see. This is a Wedgwood dealer sign, and we don't really see this one very often. You usually see the ones that are narrow and long. This one's a little bit earlier in time. It does have the Wedgwood Made in England mark on it, and it is only $12. And I think that's interesting, especially with the increased interest in Wedgwood coming along. I would say from the shape of the vessel that they're showing that this might be 1940s. So we're gonna take a chance on it. We mainly see this in Amberina Crackle, but Kanawa did make this piece in other colors, including this smoky color here. They are asking $67. Lest you think people are not into antiques and vintage, well, here are a crowd of all ages and a huge line waiting to pay at the antique mall. And it's not even closing time. Well, I have a posh new hat and we have had a great time today. I am so excited to go around and see new stuff and things I haven't seen in a long time. And I want to thank my friend for taking me around and showing me all sorts of cool stuff near Mount Dora, Florida, when we're back here for the extravaganza. Well, come out and see me and then you'll have a whole bunch of new places to look. If you enjoyed this video, check out this one. Also, click thumbs up to like this video and check the description for information about our Patreon, our memberships. We've got a lot of different levels with different perks and bonus videos and early content. Also, please do check out our website, theantiquenomad.com, for appraisal help. And we'll see you again for more adventures in the antique and vintage community soon. Bye for now.